once you got to the military or the army, you know, to be more specific, is that where you got interested into, I mean, got not interested, but uh, introduced to cybersecurity? Yeah, yeah, like really fast. So I was a signal officer, a communications officer, and um, I had to learn all things. There were tech and the basic officer leadership course that I went to as a second lieutenant. Then when I got to my unit, I was in an artillery unit where, you know, we had a bunch of missiles that we were shooting. And then a part of my job was figuring out how our missiles can communicate with each other, can communicate with the soldiers that were pushing the buttons to fire them and their location and all of that stuff. So I had to deal with that. But then on the flip side of that, I had to set up whole networks, um, both on the unclassified and on the classified side and figure that out and, and go really from, you know, an empty field. And then you set up a tent, you get some cables out there, you get some Cisco routers and you figure some stuff out and you yeah. uh, get things connected. And that's what I was doing. So I had a boss that told me if it plugged in, it was my responsibility. So I was responsible for everything from the coffee pot to Outlook <laughs> to secret networks to networking to the cybersecurity that behind it of encrypting our data and things like that, which was it's a crazy experience because, you know, there's no other real uh, company or industry where you can get that type of exposure and experience in such a short period of time, which taught me a lot. And, 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 and I was able to get exposed to a lot, but that's where I first got interested in, in cybersecurity. And then when I, when I was starting to realize I was going to get out of the military, I started to learn more about what is actual tech and cybersecurity mean outside and that's when I was like, okay, I'm really interested in this stuff because I saw some of the salaries, I saw some of the opportunities, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is something that I could do full time for sure. Nice, man. Let me get some gunshots there real quick. <laughs> man, but uh, you really reminded me of me when you said you start seeing the salaries and uh, kind of like on your way out, you start really kind of looking into it a little more. That's kind of like how it was for me coming out of college. Um uh, and ironically, as I'm talking to you right now, recently I was emailing my, I got my undergrad from LA Tech. So I was talking to the the head of my uh, old platform, not platform, but program I was in, computer information systems. And I was going over the curriculum and I was like, this curriculum looks a little stale. Like it's kind of similar to what I had, which was not helpful at all. But they, I guess they've changed a little bit of the programming languages they teach. But all in all, I was like, I sent him a message like, hey, this, you know, this not going to cut it, uh, in lack of better words. I mean, I had a a client, they graduated, I think, in 2019 or something like that, and her curriculum was the exact same that I had, and I was like, this is horrible. This is why you're not going to find anything and why people, I don't know what their enrollment numbers are, but why they won't go. And I'm like, the reason why courses and boot camps are leading the charge is because schools refuse to transition into the stuff that matters for them getting out of school. That's why I believe pretty much your time, if, you know, if I, I presume that you pretty much use your army experience kind of like a big internship, you know, I mean, you was already getting paid, but plus like touching on so many different things to me, that's like a, you know, a glorified internship to where now you can put on your resume, all those projects you just worked on and you go hand it to somebody and say, Hey, this is what I did here. And I can explain to you this and this, and then, you know, they may say, okay, well, we use this specific thing or whatever, yeah. but if you could do what you did, you can learn any of that because nine times out of 10, you're going to get trained. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I tell people all the time that are in the military trying to get out that one of the things that I did that was really helpful for me to land a job when I got out um, was I got a bunch of certs my last year in, in the, in the army uh, just to, because a lot of what we do in the military doesn't directly translate to the civilian world. It's very hard right. to describe like, yeah, I was doing this. And it says like, you can do that job in that field, but you know what does translate certifications. Uh, and that helps somebody say like, Oh, this person knows this, at least, you know, I can see that because they have this. So I, my last year in the service, I got 11 certs um, wow. in, in, in a 12 month period. I was collecting every cert on the man. <laughs> Um, and it was because I knew I had to figure out a way to communicate to recruiters and other people like this is the stuff I know that I've done for the last five years. Um, so, you know, if anybody is listening to this that's in the military thinking about getting out or has been in the military and trying to get into this field, you got to put in some of the groundwork to translate your skills to the civilian world so that recruiters and companies know like, OK, so, yeah, you were in the army doing cyber stuff. But what does that mean? OK, it means you got sec plus, you got CISA plus, he has these cloud certs, whatever it may be, whatever path you're trying to go down. 
you, you got to kind of do some of that work to, to, to convince them. And that's what I did. I used the military was great from an experience perspective and it was getting me in the right rooms. But the search are what really put me over the top because it helped me speak the language of the civilian organizations. Nice. But at least, like I say, I was just leaning back on that. You actually had experience, but you coupled that with certs. Yeah, you absolutely. got people right now, you know, they they buggy push, pushes that target, you know. Shout out to Target. I used to work there through mm-hmm. college, but you know, somebody then told them on Twitter, hey, you go get these three certs and you finna make some money. But it doesn't really work like that. So I'm glad that you expounded on how you use that to leverage everything. Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to talk about what you learned in them search. So <laughs> if you you can collect them all you want, but at some point someone's going to ask you a question. And if you haven't actually done the thing or and it doesn't mean I, and I tell people all the time, like that doesn't mean that you have to have worked in this field for 30 years to get a job. But like don't show up with an AWS cert and have never actually touched anything on AWS. Like you got to actually go do the stuff, do some labs, prove that you know what you're talking about, because there's. There's times I've interviewed people with crazy resumes and I ask them a very simple question and I can't get an answer. And it's because they've just collected certs or other stuff. And it's like, it's very, it's easy. That's the thing that's crazy about this industry. I'm sure you see it, but like, it's very easy to collect a cert, but it's also easy to find out what someone doesn't know. It's it's so quick and easy that I can do it in a really quick conversation without it taking much effort. So it's like, to me, it's pointless for those people out there that are just cert chasing without the knowledge because you're going to get called out on it very quickly. Um, and you're going right. To Definitely. I, I tell them all the time, hey, do the cert to learn and not to pass. Uh, you know, not to talk about a client, but I had to tell them that because they were saying, well, they were struggling, kind of remembering what they're doing. And I was like, well, slow down and really try to focus on this because you can't get this thing and then try to slap it on your resume and then they ask you something you don't know. Like you go, like you say, you go get an AWS or and they say, Oh, you know, what is a VPC? And you're like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> uh, what what letter of question is that? A, B, C, or D on the test, you know? Exactly. That, that's kind of what it is, because if you a lot of these people, like I brought up earlier, will promise them you get all these certs. So they'll study a week or two and pass it. Oh, and go on LinkedIn. Oh, I just got this. But then you still see open to work on their profile or yeah. they're on Twitter and they talk about, I can't get no callbacks. And then you go look at their resume, no projects done whatsoever with the new technology they're trying to get into. So I was like, how are we supposed to know that you know how to do what you say you did just because you got a cert? I mean, yep. you got the rise of the people who just inbox you on LinkedIn and say, hey, so-and-so, would you be interested in some training? We can get you AWS. And <laughs> somebody just sent me that earlier and I, I ain't responded to them yet. I typically make them, you know, stop messaging me. But 